Today, I wanna to go over the solo and group farming builds that I've been using, compare some of the times that I've actually been able to get in Elder Rifts. I think this is a good judgment of how much single target and AOE damage that we can actually do. And also showcasing some of the group builds and how effective specific legendary items and skills can be when you're in those parties of four. Let's jump into it. So uh, really we're going to be dividing these builds into two different categories. One, the farming slash solo build, and then two, the dungeon build. Now, obviously you can get way, way more derivative and talk about specific areas of the game, but overall, these are your general builds. When you start getting to specific content like Path of Blood, Challenge Rifts, you can have all sorts of different builds then and adapt based on what you need in those areas. But I wanted to give you some general guidelines on what you need to run. Now, when we're talking about farming, which we're going to go over first, we're looking for high single target damage to get through the bosses, as well as decent amount of AOE to get through all the trash mods. I'm thinking areas like Elder Rifts. I'm thinking Challenge Rifts. I'm thinking uh, group farming, open world farming uh, in general, and overall just anywhere where you're using a solo build and you're running around killing monsters and have bosses. Dungeons, I generally classify in a separate area as well as raids, and that is where we're going to enter our group farming build. Now, what are we running here? Well, let's first look over the legendary items because we need to understand what legendary modifications we're using on our abilities. First off, we're running many eyed Aegis. This is allows us our, uh, allows our consecration here to move with us. Make sure you use consecration before you mount up on your horse. Otherwise, you will demount from your horse. And we have a lot of uh, draw and quarter modifications here. Second is Besieger. This is going to launch a bombardment. It's going to be randomly uh, on nearby enemies for a decent amount of damage when we're on our horse. Sivket's advantage is going to increase our draw and quarter duration by 30%. Bladed Jambo here is going to leave a fiery trail in order for us to burn enemies when we're running away from them or just running past them and they'll die off as we run past them. Tumult here is our, going to be our first part of our build here. We have three different modifications of our solo slash open world farming build and Tumult is going to be the first uh, kind of unique modification here because we're going to be running Falling Sword. And this is going to allow our Falling Sword to do an AoE area of damage, which will do some massive, massive damage. And then Sinkhole Cross. This one is going to be important for us to get some massive single target damage because our Spinning Shield will hover at a location. So what abilities we're running? Well, we're gonna, we went over them all, basically. And that is going to be the Draw and Quarter for a movement speed and overall uh, damage with all the modifications that we've done. Consecration for AoE damage overall just massive amounts of damage due to how much damage we're doing over the period of time spinning shield for single target damage falling sword for another aoe and just overall again basically a second consecration we just go ahead and just showcase the abilities right here there's the blade and jam bow the fiery path consecration you can see we move around with it spinning shield is that hovering in location shield and tumult is going to do that massive aoe damage like consecration so I want to showcase each one of these three builds. I think this is mainly more so an earlier game build where you're clearing through a lot of trash and just running through open world farming. This is an excellent open world farming build due to how much AOE you have and how much trash clearing you have, but it lacks uh, against one other build uh, in single target damage. I oftentimes don't use this build. I really stick to the other two builds generally when I'm farming, but I wanted to showcase this one because I do think it's very, very solid. So I'll run into an Elder Rift here and just showcase some of the mechanics with this build. Really, the two things you want to note are Consecration before you mount up. And the second thing is Spinning Shield in the right location. Now, Elder Rifts are something that I really want to optimize here in order for us to get fastest runs. But you'll see here, we just mount up on our horse, Consecration. What I like to do is drop by the Falling Sword here when I'm running through and not return for the monsters, but I am just returning for the monsters here just to show you. And we're also running Sacred Fire, which I think I kind of didn't even mention, but generally it's just for extra damage uh, as we're running through. Looks like there's some dead ends there. Didn't use Consecration there because I knew I was going to be not fighting a ton of monsters. I will stay for the blue ones here just so I can get the extra Rift progress as well as the experience. 
And you can see here, this is kind of the strategy for Elder Rifts. Run past them, drop a Falling Sword on the Trash Monsters, it will kill off the rest of them. Try to keep up your kill streaks by popping the abilities that you can move with. And then we meet another elite group here. We can finish those off. And this is just generally the strategy. We just go through, find elites, stop for a second, kill them off, and then mount up and move on to the next. I'm going to go ahead and just jump to the boss fight here uh, so that you can see <laughs> the damage that we're dealing and how fast we're killing some of these bosses. So here we go, boss spawned, and we just jump, jump everything down on the boss here. Now, when you're using your horse and killing off a single target, it's not good enough just to stand there and basic you're going to want to move them around so you can get extra damage from that bladed jam bow passive and you can see here rift in one minute 40 seconds it's not bad but boss killing potential with double aoe over time and the single target spinning shield damage is quite nice i'm going to show you the one that i actually use more often than this build and then one other one for a lot of aoe damage so this next build is the one that i run all the time and it is going to be the basically the same build but there's three modifications that i made one we now have holy banner and this is very very important and very very specific usage this build you're going to want to gather up your enemies and play around your banner cooldown burst everything when your banner is active and then move on to the next the other thing that i want to mention is we have a few different modifications in legendary items two to be exact Arrow Keeper, it allows us to bring the banner with us. If you do not have this item, do not run banner. Your banner will die. Also, you'll be moving around a lot, so you'll get out of the radius and just not get any value when you're farming around. And the second thing is the Bristle. This is huge for our Shockwave type attack that deals 25% of our basic damage to anyone in the behind. So you can tag monsters, bring them along, things like that. It's very, very useful for overall scouting and things like that. Let's see how fast we could do compared to the previous build. You can see here, we just do massive amounts of damage with the banner here. You play around your banner cooldown. I wanted to go ahead and pick up those Rift Orbs. So we kill some enemies and move on to the next group. And this is kind of how I tag enemies. I go ahead and run around, throw a Shockwave out, tag the enemies and move on to the next group. Uh, in this case... I play on PC, so it's very hard to use my basic and not turn around with the horse. It actually slows down my runs, which is why I don't do it. If you're playing on the phone or you have a controller, it's much easier to do. Dropping skills behind you just to kill off some enemies is basically the strategy for doing very, very quick Elder Rifts. You can see here we've reached a group with a gold and an elite pack. Drop the banner and you can see we basically one shot all of the monsters there and got very, very quick quickly through that group of enemies i'm actually going to save my cooldowns here i'm getting close to a boss fight so i'm just going to go ahead and kill off these monsters wait for the boss to spawn and then use the banner and burst them down as fast as possible you can see here it is very very quick and once again we're going to be moving around with our horse uh, in order to do maximum damage but you can see here the burst damage on this is very high and then once the banner goes we lose a lot of damage that rift happened to be a minute 24 the overall build for this one is very targeted on bursting down groups of very powerful monsters. And this is perfect for farming, open world farming, and Elder Rift farming because your banner comes off cooldown by the time the next group spawns or the boss spawns. Or if you're open world farming, you get them all together, drop your banner, one shot them, your banner can't die because it's on your back. Very, very impactful and one of the most important builds that I run almost all the time. This last solo farming build is very very similar to the previous one there's only one modification that is going to be pavis of 10 wings now i do think this is a solid build but i think that because you're so focused on getting through bosses in this game and that's the bottleneck i think this build is significantly uh less effective than the previous one with sinkhole cross this one relies on the spinning shield you can see here it's going to spin around you and deal damage. It's quite nice for open world farming specifically, especially in areas where you want to tag a bunch of monsters. That's why we have that sacred fire modification generally. So this one's not bad at all. Uh, we could drop the consecration and kill off the enemies that are running through there. And overall, again, this is much more AOE centric and we're not going to be able to burst down enemies as quickly due to our single target damage being lacking. And oftentimes it's just completely useless. 
uh, for the spinning shields to be spinning like that because you're not actually gonna, not going to hit the boss that's right in front of you because the spinning shield is spinning around them rather than on top of them like with the sinkhole cross. But that being said, it is a very, very solid build and something that you definitely should take a look at for specific circumstances. This Elder Rift is going to take a lot longer than the previous one. I can already tell uh, just because of this, uh, the Pavis of Ten Wings. But let's go ahead and just run over to this yellow and see if we can do some big damage. Actually, we could just kill off these enemies and ignore the yellow and get to the boss and just kind of showcase how fast we can defeat the boss. Now, we will not have Consecration up right away, but we could easily see the difference. We could even run around and just try trying to get our spinning shield hits. Even with Consecration active, we would not have been nearly close enough to getting off uh, and killing this boss as quick as we did with the sinkhole cross it's just because our spinning shield isn't going to hit them if we're trying to melee them and so it's much much slower as you see there the spinning shield really is for aoe and we don't really have a problem with aoe between our horse and our consecration plus banner buffs with those two skills so really you want to focus on that single target damage which is why i think sinkhole cross is just going to be better that being said pavis is an option if you choose to run it now, the last build I want to show you is specifically for dungeons. And we have a few options here due to our legendary items kind of overlapping in a sense uh, in the slots that they are in. There's two modifications in terms of legendary items here. One, we have Justice Without Favor. It turns our immunity, damage immunity skill into a damaging ability, which is the highest damage uh, dealing ability in the game if you happen to get it on all your party members. And Grim Crack Buckler is our other one, which modifies our punish skill. And if we're using Punish, then our primary attack over here on Bristle is not doing anything because it's modifying Sacred Fire. So if you're running Sacred Fire, which you can run, change this to uh, the one that makes Consecration slow. I forgot the name of that one. Uh, Zaynula's Last Hymn. That's what you're going to want to run if you're running Sacred Fire. If you're running Punish, then you're going to want to keep Grim Grimcrack Buckler for the AoE damage and the extra survivability with the Punish skill. Very, very solid. You can see here, this is what the fire shield looks like. And it applies to everyone in the area on your party. The damage on this stacks for each party member. So if you're running a multiple melee party, which generally is the case, usually two to three melee members, this is going to deal massive amounts of damage. And I'll just showcase it here with you uh, on my own character. But just keep in mind, this is multiplied by however many people are actually next to the boss with this shield on it starts to get a little insane now we do not have uh sacred fire so we can't hit backwards but this is overall solid and banner is a must-have if you're playing in a party if you do not have banner in a party then you are doing something wrong as the crusader that is your main job is to make sure that banner is out there and getting that huge huge crit rate and damage buff for your whole squad and Draw and quarter is just essential for scouting ahead and overall bringing in units for your team. In dungeons, there's a lot of certain checkpoints that you need to reach for spawns to happen or uh, you want to group up enemies for your party so they can kill them off. So overall, you just want to have the horse so you have the option to go ahead and bring those monsters to your allies or to go ahead and trigger those events that will spawn extra units or spawn the boss itself. So you can see here, the strategy is very similar. Drop a Consecration, kill off the enemies, and run past them with your horse. When the boss spawns, we drop Banner, and we put this Conjuration of Light buff up. You can see here, the damage is quite significant, even with one person, and it lasts for quite a while. It does a ton of damage when you have four allies with that Conjuration of Light Fire Shield. But even with only one member, this is still faster than the Pavis of 10 Wings. So just keep that in mind. You get some massive, massive damage and it is an AOE around you. So you get some insane value out of this ability, even with one person. Uh, but it is worse than the single cross build for single target when you're running with one person. But if you're running with two or three melee members, definitely pick up this Conjuration of Light, buff them up with Banner, and then see some massive damage. So hopefully that gives you all an idea on what I'm running as the Crusader. <laughs> Some key, key skills and key legendary items are needed in order to get maximum value. 
There are a lot of other builds out there, especially dealing with extra mobility, running shield charge, running falling sword with little lance, getting some extra dashes in your build. Even sacred chain is something that I think is very, very excellent. I will be coming out with extra builds and more builds and some different strategies to run when you're running around because I know it gets a little stale to run the same build over and over again. And if you've not seen my previous video on PvP, I had an insane PvP match the other day. So I'll leave it at the end of the video here. And I will be coming out with more PvP builds in the future for those of you that are interested. That being said, hopefully you enjoyed and I'll hope to see many banners out there buffing the parties. I'll see you for the next one.